modern power converters unit 1 switched mode power supply first topic linear voltage regulators so in general there are two types of power supplies available one is linear regulated power supply another one is switched mode power supply first concept linear mode power supply so this figure one shows the schematic diagram of a linear voltage regulator so the utility of an ac voltage is first stepped down by using a utility frequency transformer then it is going to rectify using a diode rectifier and then it is filtered by placing a capacitor across the rectifier output so the unregulated capacitor voltage becomes the input to the linear type power supply the filter of the capacitor size is so chosen to optimize the level of a overall cost and volume the end user will have a regulated output voltage a transistor is placed in between an unregulated dc voltage and the desired regulated dc output so this is the basic concept behind this linear voltage regulator next type switched mode power supply that is smps in the case of smps the input supply drawn from the ac mains the input voltage is first rectified and filtered by using a capacitor and the rectifier output the unregulated dc voltage across the capacitor is then fed to a high frequency dc to dc converter so actually it is a unregulated dc input voltage to a regulated dc output voltage the ratio can be determined by varying the duty cycle so some of the advantages are it can have very low power losses and have high efficiency say up to 95 percentage and it has very low cost size and weight compared to that of a linear power supply so one drawback is that control circuit designing is somewhat complex in SMPS. So this is about switched mode power supply. Next topic, switching regulator. First one is buck mode switched regulators. So the buck switching regulator is a one of the type of switched mode power supply. It will reduce the voltage available at the output terminal without changing the polarity in other words the bug switching regulator means it is a step down switching regulator this is about the definition of a basic uh, bug switching converter so this figure 3 shows the bug converter circuit diagram and corresponding analysis of a bug converter what will happen when switch is going to close and what will happen when switch is going to open so this is the next diagram let's discuss one by one so the basic configuration of a buck converter by using a transistor that is tr1 with a diode d1 and an inductor l1 with a smoothing capacitor c1 the buck converter has two operating modes one is what will happen when transistor tr1 is going to turn off and what will happen when tr1 is going to turn off so this diagram shows so when transistor that is s is going to closed so the diode t1 becomes reverse bias and the output input voltage v in causes current to flow through a inductor to the connected load at the output so what will happen the capacitor is going to charge so as the charging current flows through the inductor coil so this will continuously indefinitely as long as the tr1 that is switch is going to close it so this is the first case the next case what will happen in the transistor that is switch is going to open so when transistor that is switch is going to open so this will make the reverse voltage will cause the diode to become forward bias so the stored energy in the inductor forces the current to continue to flow through the load in the same direction and return back through the diode so then the inductor that is l1 returns its store energy back to the load so it is acting as a source so at the same time the capacitor also discharging supply current to the load so the combination of this inductor and capacitor that is l and c will form a filtering circuit so therefore when the transistor is is in closed condition the current is supplied from the supply so when the transistor is in open condition the current is supplied by the inductor so these are the two modes of operation in this buck converter so as the transistor is switching being continuously closed and open the average output voltage value is therefore related with the help of a duty cycle 
So, some of the advantages of using buck converter is using of inductor capacitor arrangement will provides a good filtering circuit of the inductor current. So, this is a basic idea of buck converter and this is the corresponding waveforms what will happen when the inductor current is in continuous mode of operation. Next topic boost switching regulator. So, the boost switching regulator is another type of switched mode power supply SMP is concept. So, the boost converter is designed to increase the DC voltage from low voltage to a higher voltage as its name itself indicates it is a boost regulator. So, the output voltage is definitely higher than that of the input voltage. So, in other words we can say it is a step up regulating circuit. So, this is a diagram circuit diagram for boost switching regulator and the corresponding analysis of boost converter circuit. Let us discuss one by one. The first mode of operation the boost converter circuit when the transistor is switched fully on that is transistor is in on condition the energy from supply that is input voltage passes through the inductor and transistor switch and back to the supply. So, what will happen this will increase the current flowing through the inductor. So, the diode will become reverse bias that is D1 becomes reverse bias and its anode is connected to the ground via the transistor. So, this is a case 1, in case 2, case 2 means when the transistor is stood fully off condition. So, what will happen the input supply is now connected to the output via the series connected inductor and diode. So, what it will do it will forward bias the diode. So, the current supplied to the capacitor is the diode current which will be always be in on or off as the diode is continuously switched between forward and reverse status by the switching across the transistor. So, as the inductor voltage across the L1 is negative it adds to the source voltage that is V input forcing the inductor current into the load. So, the output voltage from the boost converters depending upon the input voltage and duty cycle. So, it is purely depending upon the input voltage and duty cycle. Therefore, by controlling the duty cycle output voltage can be achieved. So, the boost converter are more commonly used in capacity circuit applications such as battery chargers, photo flashes, etc. So, these are some of the applications of boost converter circuits and this corresponding waveforms. So, this waveform shows when the inductor current is in continuous mode of operation. Next topic, buck boost switching regulator. This, so, this is another type mode of SMBS. So, the buck boost switching regulator is a combination of buck converter and boost converter that will produce an inverted output voltage. It can be, it can be greater or lesser than the input voltage based upon the duty cycle. So, this is the basic concept and figure 11 shows the buck boost converter circuit diagram corresponding analysis of buck boost converter circuit. Let us discuss one by one. So, what will happen when the transistor that is tier 1 switch is going to closed. So, when the transistor tier 1 switch is going to fully closed the voltage across the inductor is equal to the supply voltage. So, what will happen? So, the inductor will source the energy from the input. So, here we are using an inductor L. So, it will source the energy from the input supply voltage. So, when the transistor is fully open, next case, second case, what will happen when transistor is fully open that is switch is going to open, the diode becomes forward bias and the energy previously stored in the inductor will transfer to the load all the energy stored in the inductor will directly transfer to the load. So, in other words when the switch is going to be in on condition the energy is delivered into the inductor by DC supply and when the switch that is transistor switch is going to be in off means the voltage across the inductor reverse as the voltage of the inductor becomes a source of energy. So, the energy stored previously in the inductor is switched to the 
output through the diode. So as the result the magnetic of the inverted output voltage can be greater or smaller depending upon the input voltage also based upon the duty cycle. So this is a concept behind this buck boost switching regulator. And this is the corresponding waveforms what will happen when inductor current is in continuous mode of operation. Next topic. Cut converters. So, in general, the cut converter reduces the switching component of the input and output current. So, this can be achieved by using an inductor is in series with the both the input and output. So, here we are using inductor, two inductors L1 and L2 has been connected in series with the input and output to the load. Let us discuss the principle of operation. What will happen when the switch is going to close? that is when the switch is going to close that is an off condition the diode will become on. So, the capacitor what will happen it automatically charges. So, the current that is I2 current flows through the load and the diode. So, when the switch is going to turn on next case the switch is going to be on the diode becomes reverse bias due to the capacitor voltage. So, the energy stored in the capacitor is dumped into the load through I2 current. So, as the load current is allowed to flow continuously during either clock cycle by suitable coupling of the input and output of the inductors. So, the input and output current is a very small value. So, in general the cut converter is based upon the capacitor energy transfer equipment. So, the output of the cut converter is a bug boost with polarity reversal. So, this is about the cut converters corresponding waveforms. Next topic CEPIC converter. So, in general this cut converter and bug boost converter reverse the voltage polarity of the input voltage and causes large amount of electrical stresses to the component. And what will happen means? So, this will make the device failure or overheating. So, this is the drawback of a cut converter and bug boost converter. So, in this CEPI converter this both the problems has been rectified. So, in general this CEPI converter is a step up or step down converter it will produce a low harmonic content with a regulated output voltage and this is a basic circuit diagram. And next topic zeta converters and figure 18 says the basic circuit diagram of a zeta converter. So, the operation of the converter can be explained in two modes when switch is going to on and another one is switch is going to off. First case when switch is going to turn on means the diode will become reverse bias due to the negative potential applied across it. So, it will blocks the current. So, what will happen the energy stored in the capacitor is transferred to the inductor L2 here we are using inductor L2 L1 and L2. So, the energy stored in the capacitor will transfer to the inductor L2 and the L1 stores the energy from the source. So, L1 can able to stores the energy through the input supply voltage. So, the inductor currents rises from maximum value to minimum value to the maximum value during this period. So, this is the first case. In the next case when the switch is going to turn off what will happen the diode becomes forward bias the diode becomes on and it is going to start conducting. So, what will happen the energy stored in the inductor that is L1 is transferred to the capacitor and the energy stored in the inductor that is L2 is transferred to the C naught capacitor and the load. So, the inductor current fall from maximum value to the minimum value during this time period. So, the voltage conversion ratio of the zeta converter is same as that of the bug boost converter and a CEPIC converter. So, this is about the zeta converters. Next bridge converters, first is off bridge converters. So, this is circuit diagram for off bridge converter topologies. So, actually it is a double ended bridge off bridge topology. The off bridge topology has only one primary winding. So, the capacitor center node voltage is fixed approximately to half of the input voltage. So, therefore, only half of the input voltage will appear across the primary winding at any time. So, since only half of the input voltage is going to 
appear across the primary the peak current in the half bridge topology is twice as that of the as i as compared to the some of the topologies like pusspool topology identical power topology etc so this topology is not suitable for higher end application higher end power applications so this is about half bridge converter topology next full bridge converters so this is a diagram so full bridge converter topology so its power output is significantly higher than that of the off bridge topology so this is because the balancing capacitors has been replaced with another pair of switches so two or four power switches can be turned on simultaneously during each conduction cycle so this places the full input voltage across the primary winding which reduces the peak current flowing through it compared to that of a half bridge topology so some of the applications output power can be used 300 wattage to some several kilowatt in the case of full bridge topologies so this is the concept behind this full bridge converters it's all about unit 1 thank you